Welcome back to Time Series Analysis. Today we shall focus on multivariate time series. So we'll step from where we were last week and then say there we started looking at how does things behave when you have both a process you're modeling but you also have an input. Now we're going to say well what if we consider everything as part of the model. That's what we do for the multivariate setting. So in the Unitary setting last week, we had this structure here. So you have an input. You have an input xt here. Then you have a system that for now just call it h1 of b as a transfer function. Then we add some noise to it. And this may be colored noise. For now, it's just noise. And then what we have out here is our obs observations. Now, what if we don't just have these observations here, like this system, but what if we have feedback? So that means, what if you take the output yt, and then you add that into a system? Let's call this one h2 of b. And then you can add some more noise, let's call it N2, and then we take this and we define that as XT. Now, with this formulation, we have a feedback loop. So the input from X goes through H1 to get to Y by adding NT, but it also feeds back to X. So this is basically what we have as a closed loop model. Now, we can write this in many ways. One such way of, of writing this whole thing is to do it in a matrix vector form. So what we have is that when you look at the individual time series there, then as we had last week, yt equals h1 of b on xt plus nt, and let's call it n1 up here, as we call this n2. And then correspondingly we have xt can be written as h2b on yt, that's what you get here, and then we add n2 t there. So this is our system. Now the way we want to represent it is in the following form. So what we do to get it is that we move these two terms that have to do with x and y to the left hand side and then we make it on the matrix vector form. So what we have now is that we have two noisy inputs here in one and in two and then we have two different states or output. So this is a, what we would call a state space form at a later point in time. Now in total we have four different transfer functions in here from input to output. So first let us look at trying to insert x into the place. So what we do is that we take this expression and insert that in the place of xt here and then we have this formulation up here. Now if you multiply into this parenthesis here, then we can look at that, but before doing that, to be able to, to, be able to make calculations with this, we'll do it in the set domain. So we'll do the set transformation of all terms here, and now we'll multiply in, and then we'll take the part here that is related to y here, we get an h1, h2 on y set, subtract that on both sides, and by dividing by that 1 minus h1, h2, which is what you get on the left hand side, then we see that what is left with n1, well we just have n1 here, whereas we have an h1 on n2 contribution here. So the transfer functions for the individual part is for n1 to y is 1 divided by 1 minus h1 offset times h2 offset, 
and for n2, the main difference is that the nominator is h1 of z instead of just a 1. Now, intuitively, we're looking at yt. n1 gets out directly, but there's also a closed loop contribution that gives you the denominator here. Whereas the noise that comes from n2 has to go through h1 before you observe it. So therefore, it makes sense that you drag it through h1 here before, and then you look at again, what is the closed loop add-on to this. So that was from n1 and n2 to y. But of course, we could also do it reverse by inserting the expression for y in the equation for x, and then do the same thing. You do the transformation to the set domain, and then you isolate x on the left-hand side. And again, you get the same denominator because it's the same closed loop that you have here. And then you get a contribution from n2. Well, the contribution from n2 to x goes directly, whereas from, H, from n1, you go through h2 before you get to x. So therefore, the symmetry here is quite obvious that there's a small difference here, that's the other one that has to go through a, trend, a system part before getting out. Now, when we do all these things in a univariate setting, well, then we have to do things repeatedly once for each state. What I prefer to do is to do things in a multivariate setting. So if we get back to the multivariate model equation here, we can also transform this into the set domain like this. Now, all we have to do now is to isolate y over x on the left-hand side by multiplying by the inverse of this. Remembering that the inverse, how you do that, basically what you do is that you swap the elements in diagonal. Well, swapping once gives you once. And then you change signs on the off diagonal. And then you divide by the determinant which is exactly the 1 minus h1 of set, h2 of set. So what we have here is basically done all the things that we did on the previous two slides in just one slide. And if we multiply the 1 over the determinant inside, then we get all these transfer functions. What we got before was what's in the rows. That was what we got out when we did it one by one. But I hope you agree with me that it's nicer to have it in a multivariate setting. Then it's, to some extent, easier to handle as well. And it's clear to see what the structure is and where the structure comes from.